going on, people? Once again, it's Glenn and Cameron. And there will probably be a ton of videos this weekend. I got a lot of stuff on my mind that I want to share. And this is a big one. Big, big, big one. Many people want to work at home. They want to be self-employed, own the business. And they have that thought, that desire in their heart. But they never, ever made the decision. This is how someone ends up being 90 years old with a pocket full of regrets. If you want to learn how to thrive in the disruptive economy, enroll in Hustlers University today. Hit that green bar and you'll be good to go. You have to make the decision. This isn't, you know, the thing with LeBron a few years ago. It's actually, it's kind of the same. It's the decision. At some point, you have to sit yourself down and say, this is what I'm going to do with full vigor, gusto, and all of your might, heart, all your abilities. You're just going to have to sell out. And that is why so many folks are in that perpetual phase of I want to start a business I want to be self-employed no speaking to myself until I got laid off three times in a row in 18 month period I was just like you because I bought into the narrative of having a job I bought into the narrative of having a career for many people that works it worked for a long time we live in an economy that threatens that in many different fields so many people are being disrupted so with that decision you got to be really really honest and what i'm seeing sometimes people are forced into entrepreneurship which can be good and it can be bad because you didn't get there because it's what you really wanted to do you got there because of a survival instinct and when I say bad, I'm not saying it's bad that you started a business to support yourself, feed your family. I'm not saying it's bad. What I'm saying is bad is your motivation is really not deep. Because once certain things are solved, you may go back. That's how you see people who were self-employed and they go get a job. And they're self-employed and they keep going. Because they're not really starting a business from a place of strong urgent desire when you come from strong urgent desire that posture it's a different ball game because I look at some of the most successful people in the world and many of them got that way because of a strong desire to either improve the world like take you know YouTube Google Google owns this Google's goal wasn't to becoming this billion dollar company. That was not their mission statement. Their mission statement was to index the world. And then all of that other stuff came with it and they're still doing it. So you gotta have this big, 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 big compelling reason to start your business. And if you don't, it doesn't give you all of the proper energy, resources, these things that you need to be successful, you, you won't get those long term. Anyone can start a business for six months or a year. Anyone can do that. When you get to, I mean, it's a statistical fact that so many businesses are gone by year five. And it's hard. It is very, very hard. But to compare and to contrast, having a job today is very hard. And it is, it's, in my opinion, depending upon your field, your career, it's just as risky as starting your own business. You could get laid off, you can get fired. The company could change their mission and then no longer need your services. And, it, and it's not really a personal decision. It's not that you did anything wrong. And that's the thing I think that really trips up a lot of people. You do not have to do anything wrong. You don't have to be late. You don't have to be an underperformer. You can actually be an overperformer. I was salesman of the month when I got laid off. 
that messes with you. You're like, wait a minute, I'm doing my job. I'm coming on time. I'm doing what I need to do. And I still get got. It's really hard to reconcile in your mind because of the narratives that we're taught. So understand, you have to make a decision from a really good place to become a business owner. Now, being broke and needing cash is not. Okay, we had a technical, we had equipment malfunction. The sucker fell off. That was funny. But as I was saying, being broke, okay, it stayed. <laughs> being broke is not necessarily a bad place to actually uh, start, you know, trying to start your business. You can leverage that, but understand it has to be a larger, a bigger decision. It has to be substantial. It has to be stuff that keeps you up at night because long term is what you want. Because when I was in the storage auction business, I noticed that there was a lot of people that had reached a certain level and just stayed. They didn't go any higher. And there's another group of people like, well, you know, it's just their personal decision. That's all they wanted to do. Bullshit. If you're in the position where you can make some serious cash, and you don't want to do it, it's there's other reasons. And the reason is the narrative. So many people believe that they could not make a full-time living with storage auctions because of the if factor. How I solved that problem was, okay, I need 3,500 bucks a month to live. I buy 10 storage units, that's gonna get me two to 6,000, maybe more a month, okay. So I need to buy 20 storage units because if 10 gets me two to six, 20 is gonna get me four to 12. It's about volume and it's about living within your means. And that's what trips people up. Because if you can get your means down to like three, four grand a month, and you have other resources such as a vehicle, space, you can make that in the storage auction game very quickly. Pretty much any area that has an ample supply of storage units. But many people did not come back, break it down, look at what they should do or really look at it in that manner because they didn't make the decision. When you make the decision, it prompts you to look at other things. And I'm going to give you a real good example of a major decision that, you, that you've you seen someone wig out over. You got this guy. You got this girl. And they decide to get married. Have you seen how people freak out the day of the wedding? The nerves. All of this stuff. Because at that moment, that decision becomes extremely real. Long as it's not real you don't have to deal with certain things. So when you make the decision and you make it real, you are forced to look at it the way that it is. It is like, well, you know, I'm assuming that it's gonna, no. You, you're forced. You are forced to look at it, to analyze it, to objective, you, you got to look at it. And that's the thing with the decision. You, you have to set yourself up for success by looking at the angles. And it's a nerve-wracking proposition. It can be anxiety-inducing. It can be. But my question to you, what is your life worth? What is it worth? This is my personal philosophy. I'd rather fail massively than to, uh, to win on a minuscule level. I mean, I have woo, crash and burn. And this is something about failing massively. I can give you a quick lesson on when you fail massively. When everything goes wrong. When your house, your, your money, your family, all this stuff is impacted. When that happens and you are able 
to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, my friends, you become an extremely powerful person. You become a force to be reckoned with because you don't know if you're strong. You don't think you're strong. You know you're strong. You know you're capable. You know you can deal with adversity and hardship. You know. When you know these things, it makes you confident and improves your self-esteem and it takes you to a higher level of humanity. You begin to understand other people better because you understand yourself better. You, And this is all important because business is about people. It's not about money. It's not about products. It's about people. And when you go ahead and think of it in those terms, you will be more and more successful, way more successful. Because recently I've done some things to make my business better and it's gonna sound very, it's gonna sound, <laughs> it's gonna sound crazy, but I purposely have driven off some people. And this is, the, you know, I've said things to piss people off. I've made some statements that people have unsubscribed from the channel because I realize that if someone is having a problem with me or they're not hearing my message, <clears throat> doesn't mean they're good, doesn't mean they're bad, it means we're incompatible. It means we're very, very incompatible. Because I have people on this channel, I have people in my groups who get it and they're like with the G-verse. I want more of them. And I'll say it to you today, I would rather have you know, two, three, four hundred of those people than 10,000 of the other kind because other kind are going to come in and they're going to go out. But that core group who get it, who love the message, who are fed by the message, who get a lot out of it, we're compatible. And a lot of people want to do, I want everyone to love me and it's never going to happen and you're setting yourself up for misery. So in doing that with my business and getting rid of all those people, running off folks, I can now answer my emails. And someone's like, well, why don't you grow your business, hire someone to answer the emails? Because the people that were sending the messages were not the right customers for my business. I wasn't the right business for their requirements. When you look at it like that, you make better decisions, your business gets better, you make more money. All money is not good money. All clients are not great clients. That's why you have to live within your means so you have what I call fuck you power. Oh, you don't like fuck you. Take your money. Go have a nice life. Find someone else to irritate. That is a wonderful place to be. To be able to tell someone that's trying to offer you 10 G's to fuck you. I don't need your money. Don't want your money because you are a pain in the ass. It's a beautiful place to be. Because I like working with people who are energetic, who are hardworking, who, who are trying to do something with their life. I don't like working with whiners. I don't work, like working with little scared little bitches. I don't like working with people who make fucking excuses and who have pretty much have given up, but they keep acting as if they're still trying. I don't fuck those people. Don't like them. Don't want them. I, I can't stand their energy. It stinks. It makes my nose wrinkle. I don't want to be around them. But that is a decision that I made for my business. That is a decision. And when you make those decisions, you will see your business grow in ways you never thought possible. Another decision I made. I haven't killed the storage auction thing, but I really have moved far away from it because I haven't bought a unit since early 2009. <laughs> I haven't done it. The game has changed. It's what I used to do. It is still a strong introductory point for me to meet other people, to introduce myself to people. It's still great for that. But, you know, I'm going to probably put all those books and stuff on sale. And another thing, it'll be a separate video, but all those storage auction stories and stuff, they're going to go on my other channel. I'm just going to download them and start uploading them over there. That was a decision. I made that decision 17 months ago. 
I was moving away from that because I knew that since that's how most people know me, it's going to take a long time to turn that ship and for me to be recognized for something else. And that's why the channel's been rebranded. That's why the message has changed. And that's, that's the decision. That is the decision. And you have to be comfortable with failure when you make a decision. Because it could happen. I'm not one to say, oh, no, it's not going to, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. No. Sometimes it's not going to be okay. But once again, when you learn to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, you become stronger. You become a better you in ways that I can't even describe to you. You will deal with things going forward so much better than you did in the past. Another part of the decision you got to get realer than you have, realer than real with yourself, more real than you ever have before. You got to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Am I starting the business so people are like, oh well, yeah, there's a business owner. Or I'm starting the business because I don't want to fucking work for anyone else. Or am I starting the business because I want to help people be successful. You need to be real on that. A lot of people think I'm an asshole. And I do stuff to garnish that opinion. I sure do. I, I love it. I love it. I'm not going to lie. I love it. But I help out a lot of people because I've learned. I can't help everyone. Can't help everyone. I'm not going to try. But I can bring a few to the good side. That's, that's, that's how I feel. And that's a decision for my business. And it's reduced a lot of stress. And once again, making these decisions, it's like when people send me emails, I can respond like that because my inbox is not full of garbage. It's not full of people who really don't need to be talking to me anyway. They need to talk to someone else because I am not the guy for them. I'm just not. And you got to get that real because I'm telling you, what we have going on today in our new world is so freaking awesome. The things that you can do, the things that you can create, the things that you, the business you can build, is stunning. I mean, I'm not some Pollyanna going that the sky is full of rainbows. I'm saying that the sky has rainbows for those who are looking for them. Because I'm looking up right now and the sky is gray. Someone else is looking up from another vantage point and it's sunny day. It just depends upon where you are in yourself and your perspective on what opportunities look like. That's something that we're going to go real deep and strong in in the 50 Laws of Hustling. It's going to probably be one of my best works because it's nothing like you would imagine. So, during this holiday season, after you've had that turkey or you've watched those football games, start thinking about your life. Start thinking about the next place you want to go, the next thing you want to do what you want to be, what you want to do for your family. Because we live in a world that has a strange dichotomy. We have groups of people who are catching hell. And we have groups of people who are becoming wealthier than ever in any point in time in history. And I ask myself, why? And many people go to conspiracy theory and I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's information. It's a different level of understanding. When you understand how this thing works, when you understand that you have endless opportunities, you understand that failure is not failure, it's a learning process, you will become powerful. You will wake up in the morning smiling. That person that cuts you off in traffic, you'd be like, whatever. It won't bother you. I'm serious, it just won't bother you. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.